Onivia League of Legends highlights. The impact of a poppy ultimate, the keeper's verdict, knocking a few of these champions away can be a big difference maker. But good poke and really good setup chipped away at slowly but surely. Grass procs are going to feel okay with the power of the shield. This is now rotating in a mid lane. Knock back onto Humanoid. Humanoid, is he going to be forced to flash here? Mantra, W for the extra healing. 52 health now coming in, but the red buff ticking away. Humanoid has to flash, but he's going to flash back into what? Razork? I don't think Razork can save him here. He's going to try to body block on Isma, but the good damage. The Mantra Q, the fire. Now coming in. Razork wants to go forward. The root is there as well. The Humanoid. healing again. The Mantra W coming from Humanoid is everything, but there's a little soccer ball getting it done. It's a one for one. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, SK engaging on the Fnatic bottom lane. Backstab coming in for Noah, but now he doesn't have the parkour to get over the wall. Nice sun comes in from Dot, but the cleanse is clean. Noah just outplays him. He knows the resources that he has, but actually desperately needs to get a kill back. Flashing Ooh. away from Johnny wants to get the auto, but Noah wants to finish the job. Oh, turn back! Noah plays it like an absolute hero to make it a two for one. Exekick tries to flash forward. For stronger in the 2v2, knowing that his karma he can live for so long. And now the no, setup on the bot side is there. Hex flash no over flashes. the wall from Jun. Waiting, biding his time. Irrelevant has TP if he wants to do this, but it might be Going for the engage. Knock up to interrupt. Doss is clean from Jun. The patience from Alistair, they're absolutely flawless. Does not use a single cool for the side of Fnatic. Razork should just be able to clear the objective out. It is three grubs to the side of SK, but 1.5k gold lead for Fnatic. A little bit of his time. SK spent the same amount of time just being ready for the counterplay. Yeah, so they had a small window where flashes were still down for another 10 seconds, but they couldn't quite find it. Now, Humanoid. Iski. Oh, damage. Being massively chunked. Irrelevant. Oh, the There's the dominant. Oscar! Just one tapped on the top side. Man felt good about the trades, should not have felt so good about the all-in. Razork fishing now for Niski. Going manatee hunting. And Irrelevant can come down if he wants to. That's a long chase for Razork there. He does have ult. A Q into an ult, he could. He just, but he doesn't know. The 3v3, unless they immediately lock Noah down, which is a tough task. There it is. Now the TP coming in. Ulti to try to disengage. Flash forward with the ball breaker. Lightning crash immediately coming out. Dot's now going to be in trouble, but it's a clean turn back with the ult from Dot. Do they have the damage? Do they have the follow-up? Execute up to the side. Just getting murdered. The damage not there from SK. The cooldowns connect, but Fnatic have the man advantage. Now the package from Niski. And if he does not ult in Oscar here, is not letting him get anything else. Package is still there. Niski going into the pit, going out of the pit. Not where he wants to be. Dr <laughs> Put that to the test because Oscar spams laugh. All right, SK. Is Poppy undiveable? I think the answer is yes, but she does not clear the wave fast enough. Yeah. Well, if they manage to take down the tower, they're just going to have to slow burn him. Now they can turn on Oscar. Alti comes in from the Varus. All right, Poppy undiveable, but the tower is gone. Oscar, you need to get the hell out. <laughs> that was your cue to leave. But in the meantime, we have to keep our eyes on the mid lane because Fnatic are just making another play. They've already gotten the Herald. Razor coming in with the Vault Breaker. Relevant here to cover. So tower picked up by SK in exchange for the Herald for Fnatic, but Humanoid is also pushing it on the top line at the same time. So yes, SK have a have information on SK, but they can see a decent number of members on the top side of the map. Are they going to send four people down bot side? Irrelevant has to be careful here. This now, is he is full HP. He's got wave clear. Got wave clear, yes. There's a TP now coming in too. But this is five members of Fnatic committed for this Crocodile. The counterplay is already happening in the mid lane. Dominus coming out. Good bit of damage. Healing there from Irrelevant. Buying Ooh. as much time as he can. Now trying to double dash out to save you. That's the slice. Has a bit of extra healing from Cole the Mink. Buys a lot of time, but mid lane tower, yep. I think it's just going to fall here. Noah isn't enough on his own. If he steps up, he's just going to get taken out. The rest of the team now is running in full speed. Niski already pushing in top. If they get mid lane tower here, it's a terrible trait for Fnatic that they clear the wave just in time. Niski will grab a tower top, but mid will go down. Now, going in, the disengage is there. This time around, executes slowly for another second, but there's a lightning crash from Noah. They're trying desperately to keep him alive, but Fnatic are still stronger. Niski now TPing in. He's going to get one kill. He shuts down Noah. They're going to get another oh, one, but the knockup from Jun is clean as Alistair is on fire. Niski's a living, burning, but he will survive for now. Now, Raz are going to go right back out to safety. The Vault Breaker there, but this blinking health bars. No more members, no more resources for Fnatic. TP now coming back in. Irrelevant there in the party, and the fight just will not stop. Raz are still living. Raz are trying to get one back. The sidestep is clean, but the shutdown is there. 600 gold to Isma. And it all starts with Irrelevant surviving for so damn long in the bot side. It means SK can cross map and threaten both top and mid. So what you have is instead of Fnatic committing to the bot side siege with that Rift Herald, they have to, you know, scramble. They have to go defend the mid tower, and then it's just, it devolves, right? You find find Exekick with the Zeri engage, but then he's dead after Goes that. top, eats all of that tower gold, then TPs mid and gets kills and gets shuts downs. Look at his individual, he's 1.2k ahead now. Contesting. He's got package as well. Fnatic have to be incredibly careful. Noah is powerful, but is he enough? Knockback from Oscar. Could be good here. 
Niski trying to find the angle. Humanoid now in trouble. Lightning Crash coming in for Noah. They try to disengage Noah on the backside, but Niski really not able to find an angle to attack, and slowly but surely, SK are taking over the fight because finally XK just gets a free hit. Humanoid on the run. Mantra Q, good. Arrow not going to connect. Humanoid buys a brief moment. The Malignant's already there for Niski. Shield now coming in from the lock. And Isma on the chase. Roots coming in. The lock up there. And down goes oh. Humanoid Fanatic. They dominated those early game exchanges. But just like that, SK not quite as initially Renekton favored. Uh, yeah, the item spikes, of course. Still one and a half for both sides as it's evened out a bit. Karma generally doesn't do that much damage. But when you see her fire like five mantra Qs, I appreciate that. I'm one of those lots of people. <laughs> I am so tired of this champion having one ability. There it is. There's the one ability. Followed up with what might look like another ability. Don't be baited. But massive healing comes in from the Renekton as Irrelevant still continues to buy time. But only two members this time committed to the bottom lane. Already, though, you can see in the picture and picture the Renekton takes forever to kill because they don't do enough damage. SK are right onto the objective. There's no TP for Humanoid. Oscar has TP, though. He could TP in from the side. There is a TP ward there on that. Oh, SK, what's the call? You just spent so much, you lost so much already, you need to turn back and try to get something. Is it the Baron? Razork in the back of the pit, TP now coming in from Oscar. They can SK turn on to the to two drakes. Three items for Noah, two and a half. Jun not going to be in too much trouble, tries to turn. A bit of a trade of cooldowns here. Razork looking Ooh. for the setup. Ulti going wide from Execute is big. Maokai disengages the ult clipping. Razork is big. He goes in, he's unstoppable. The fall of damage not quite there. Yes, it is! Noah and Humanoid finally playing together in this choke point. Doing so much work. The retreat now coming in. Niski needs to get the hell out. Fnatic, they see their opportunity. Flash forward for Noah. He's going to finish one. Can he parkour right over the wall to go for the next instead? Focusing his sights on Irrelevant. The crocodiles evaded them for so long. Irrelevant now trying to turn it back. Steadfast presence there. Irrelevant waiting as long as he can. He can double dash back through the wave. Will do so. Noah now chasing, but the movement speed is there for Fnatic. They've got the lead. Three items come through. I'll screen out comes out as well. Nisky. In that situation, I think you just hold it. Let the 15 second cooldown come back through, but. Gets Niski out for a moment, doesn't amount to too much. The objective focused here. Good damage coming in onto Oscar. Fnatic now gonna turn. Baron at 3.6k health. Reset now coming in courtesy of the Maokai. Off a bit more damage. Niski on touch on the backside. Maybe he can get something done. The Gorky's just not enough. Irrelevant still standing. Noah godlike. And we know what Zeri does when she gets this kind of lead. And it's just slaughter everybody on the side of SK. John gonna grab that kill. Fnatic descending, punishing SK there. Once again, Execute getting dropped at the start of the fight instantaneously. Fnatic know exactly what they're doing. 12 and 2, Noah, Noah, Noah cleaning up again in every single fight. And it's just a beautiful bit of macro play from Fnatic, forcing objectives. That's the second fight in a row. They picked fights against SK with Execute not having flash. Oscar flashing in. Niski zooming past, just trying to delete All the, the damage. Guys are incredibly low. Niski going back into the tower. He's shooting fish in a barrel. He can't quite hit. That one does connect. One more rocket, a little bit of poke. Everybody now trying to body block. The Corky desperately praying for the ammunition to come back. Fnatic will walk away. They now, given how strong Razor and Noah are, only need to commit two members to taking down this Baron. Noah does more than enough damage, so SK are on timer. They need to force a fight in the next 10 seconds, so that Baron is yes, gone. Yes, we need to is he not? He flashes away to sidestep. That's big. Execute flash now down. Oscar and buying a bit more time. The objective is already gone. Baron is down. If they do not win this fight immediately, the game will end in favor of Fnatic. SK advantage thus far. Flashing from Relevant, looking to lock down Noah, but immediately Razork turns and protects his carry. Jun buying as much space as he can. Doss with some good lockdown, but Jun is so damn tanky. It's not Alistair in the lane anymore. Level 13, two points in an ultimate, more than enough to make sure he can get home. And Fnatic walk out with four men. Now, the thing is, SK do have a decent amount of wave clear with the Corky Rockets, with the Corky Q and the Varus coming in too. SK, do they want to fight oh, here or do they want to back off? It's done there from Irrelevant. Noah again just free firing. Ulti coming in from the Maokai, but the knockback is there. Isma's out of the fight briefly. Irrelevant already forced to use the Dominus. Humanoid eyes on the prize here, playing for the objective. XK free hitting. He does a lot of damage to Oscar, but. And potentially engage before the super minions flood the base. You can see a relevant ulting already for Fury. Yep, flashing from Razor. He knows Execute doesn't have flash, and they just delete the enemy carry. It's Point gone. and click, seek and destroy. Niski, the last one standing, the last one who could do the damage necessary. Flash away for the mantra Q, the inner flame. Forcing Niski oh, back, but the taxi play from Jun is clean. This man's an Alistair master. Just punishing left and right. Fnatic, one or two mistakes, but overall an incredibly clean game versus SK. Happy to have an extra win in their belt. Because of this win, BDS will, of course, lock playoffs, will lock top eight. They could be the big Fnatic fans today. And throughout the entire game, constantly. Sometimes, you know, people like the flavor of the month, and sometimes people like yeah. vanilla ice cream. And Odawamne is a vanilla. Here. It's a telegraph plate. The thing is, Vitality know this is coming. They have to know that this is coming, but they're still just level one. They're just going on to Peach. Trying to harass Peach. This is smart. Yeah. Makes the dive that much more difficult. They're actually getting away with so much. Ignar really wasn't in a position to cover. Now maybe they kill Hillisang. 
Hosang flash to safety, knock up there, good immediate lockup. Patrick flashing in first blood! It's clean! Downhill he goes! So I think the problem was hitting. Too long, you instantly get punished, and now the Callista has an early item advantage, which he already has an early scaling advantage. So, so watch Daglas. He can go topside now and continue clearing, get to his level six, but. Hold that thought. That. BTO it now got. in the difficult position Cinders also find themselves in. Uh, when multiple members collapse on you from multiple angles, scatter the weak, not enough. Jackie's now getting a kill, and we talked about it. Giant X, not the cleanest early games. This game, damn clean so It's far. going really well. So much faster of a first blood than, than the yesterday. bottom side. Look at Kazi. Arzy low, but Dagwas is here to cover. Peach just has the dragon. As long as GX don't overextend here, it doesn't matter too much. They can't just walk in, get one auto, get the plate. Sista can't be dove. And he could just run through mid and potentially contest, because you could see Dagwas wants to contest them. Yep, level six for Dagwas. Does he want to use the ult? Photon trying to find the angle and has the ghost if they want to use it. Odawamne has flash, will flash back into the brush. Boomerang Black trying to get extra movement speed. The pullback oh, is there. Ulti as Photon goes all out. A quick kill pickup. What a Wamne caught overstepping on the top side of the map. Help out Jackies. There. Now the roam back down to bot lane. Four members committed here for the side of GX. What can they get? No TP up for Vitality. Up. Flash out. Karzi still has cleanse available, trying to get away. Hillisang very likely to drop here. Knock back there. Where are you at, audience fans? <laughs> Got to make sure you commit. It's very important. Oh, no. If you write something on a sign, you have to commit. Okay. Very important to me. I missed the sign. I missed the sign. What was the sign? Uh, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not sure if we're supposed to go into it. <laughs> but they know what they need to do. Karzi knows what he needs to do, too, which is get out. The cleanse? Yeah, this is rough. Unnecessary. He was dead already. GX just continued to get kills on the bottom side of the map. 1.5k gold lead. GX taking free second Drake, and this is certainly one way. You talked about it. A lot of people feel like uh, Smolder greater than all of the superior late game buffs, but... I don't know, the pace that Giant X are picking up these Drakes, very likely that they're going to be able to start. But there's nowhere really that Vitality have enough pressure to leverage Grub Buff at yeah. this point in the game. It might change as we get later. Hosang walking in. Unbreakable coming out a bit ahead of schedule. But Daglas is here first. Do they feel confident enough to pull the trigger on this play? The pullback, where is it going to go? Ignor already pulled back at the start. Karzi, happy to have the kill. And again, Giant X. They just needed an extra second. They thought they spotted the window of opportunity when the Unbreakable was down, but now it's Patrick who's in oh, trouble. The follow-up is there. There's no way he gets out of this one. Jackie's on the back side of the fight. Peach now going in, but they don't have the damage kill. Everybody, the flip back on the two is clean. Karzi flap, flap, flapping his way out to safety. Peach desperately trying to kill the Smolder. Meanwhile, Photon body blocking, oh, no. healing. Peach remounting, chasing down the little dragon. And now it's just... they go for Daglas. Bounces off his teammate's head. And it's just yeah, a full 5v5. It holds. Soon. Demolish proc is there. Tower not going to drop fast enough, so Harold will fade away. Vitality going to back off before they can quite finish it. Nope, they've got the DOT. That's the three Item, stack. But they need to find a way to leverage that power. And Patrick gets caught out here. That could all fade away. Jackie's going forward with the flick back. Unbreakable already used before the fight kicks oh, off. There it is. Now looking for the re-engage here. Jackie's just continuing to free fire. Good damage now coming forward. Patrick just getting to run rampant in this fight. BTO has to find the angle on the scatter of the week, but he doesn't get it. Pick on to Hillisang to kick things off. So much snap engage coming out from the side of Giant X. They just press one knockup, a one engage, and you can chain that off of it with a Talia W, where there's a Rakan knockup. It's so easy to follow up on. Work out, but BTO will. Respond to the bot side play, to the third dragon, to the sole point going to GX with a tower on the top side. Yeah. So two to the side of GX. So Ping's coming down on the Gnar now. They're going to try and collapse, but I feel like it's a bit too late because Gnar has crashed the uh, pushed the wave, sweep out the entirety of the top side vision, and then move to dragon after just in case that uh, the side of Giant X won. He's is available. Vitality successfully have bought themselves space and time. Mini Gnar about to come through from Odawamne. 15 seconds before he can start stacking rage again. That's going to be big. Watch Ignore on the flank. He could get into the back line with Betio there. Multiple Peach angles. has the flash too. Charm, the angle, the instant follow-up now coming through the flickback is clean! The execution flawless from GX. Hillisang now trying to pull back, no damage left. It'll be soul from GX, but they want more. They want another kill onto Hillisang. Photon running, and in the blink of an eye, Peach and Ignar flawlessly working together to finish the job. The flash. Okay. Well, there's Smolder all, then most of the wave is gone. My question to you, Dracos, is are you ready? Am I ready for it was an T1 game? versus Nongchim? Uh, level 16 games over kind of vibes, which I also don't necessarily think is true for Cassidy, although it feels that way sometimes. But Hillisang potentially overcommitting. A lot of resources being used to kill the Braum, but Hillisang flashes back to the safety of Photon, still stunned up, trying to dash back. Extra little bit of shielding coming in. GX need to keep the ball rolling. Pressure on the top side, 50 seconds left for the Baron. They still got a cannon. BTO just going to take it away, though. 
Oh, oh no, he's got the week. Ignar just takes his time, just waits, goes past him, forces him to backstep. Flash out for VTO is clean, however. Karzy now ready to turn the fight. Sneeze is on him. Photon trying to get a bit more space to fall off damage onto Patrick. Patrick, oh, the damage out, Smolder, looking for the resets. And it's a baby dragon, baby, and we've been here before. We know what happens. He's online, tick, tick, baby, time is up. Ask in a tense moment like that when your adrenaline is pumping and for Karzy, He's been beat up this entire game, doing now again? finally he gets to strike back! Fire rains from the sky! Dragon's not even involved. Peach now running. And look how quickly the pace of this game has changed. Vitality were on the back foot, but now they're looking to take over. Oh my, Peach is going as well. down. Yeah, he should drop here. One, two, three. Not quite able to get the fourth, crucially. Won't get sneezed on. And what felt like... Okay, I, was just, I was like, uh -huh. okay. You need to be, you need to be a little bit careful. But All right, Vietio. He had the fancy footwork in the previous play, but I don't think there should be any way for him to get out of this one, let alone grab a kill as long as Jackie doesn't overcommit. One quick pick on the side lane, perhaps an angle for Giant X to regain control. Who are they trying to give this to? Are they trying to stall the death to make sure that he's down for longer so they can look for the next objective? It is 44 seconds to the soul. Oh, that's some Overwatch tactics, baby. Stagger the respawns. You love to see it. Oh, look at the TP. They're going to completely chase this down. Long range, they, they've got to kite up towards Photon. Confidence from GX as we talk about this decisiveness. They kill that baby oh dragon! No. They've got a way back! Elder for GX! They've got no wave mid though, I they're don't just, think they can they're end. Just, they're just big game hunting Vitality members one at a time! Vitality had rested this game. They had regained control, but they're just split. They're just a little over eager. Giant X, fantastic punish. 10 seconds to Elder. These guys are going to secure no it, but then it's overcome Elder Dragon, and we've seen it so many times globally. Yeah. It's tough. It's a universal question. Can any of us overcome our daddy issues? <laughs> They're beat Baron and Elder together. <laughs> this should be the end of the game, but because of one baby dragon, it's uncertain, it's unclear, and now Odo potentially caught out. This is a, still a bold oh no. play. Will they try to pull back? If they go on to Jackie's with the pullback here from Photon, it could be big. Smolder calling in Mom. Trying to buy a bit of time, a bit of space. And meanwhile, VTO pushing out. Not necessarily the split pusher I would have wanted to see, but Photon getting lower and lower. Engage from Peach completely whiffs, and that is big. Now the turn. Not enough burst to get through Peach, not enough to get him down to that threshold. Just to fight back even against the Smolder that's been fully yeah. stacked, but they're just struggling now to really get anything else. The snap engage is so good, so if Hillasang ever does the Hillasang, Pull the trigger. Now an engage onto two is oh, big. Go to one immediately gonna follow up, and that should just be it. V2 goes golden, gets a brief moment. Karzy on the wrong side of the wall, getting away from the poke, trying desperately to hold on. Patrick getting chunked out. Well, Photon Pat trying to finish the job. Photon going in, unstoppable, wants to finish off. Patrick, Patrick dancing, diving, ducking, the clutch to lives. GX, what else can they get? Nine seconds left on the Baron. Can they push for anything else, or are they just too scared of this smolder? Patrick's chunked. They have to recall. I think Jackie's is going to TP in. He does have the teleport, but the wave clear is still there, and they don't have Nash. I don't know if you get a better opportunity than this. Okay. Now we see on X. <laughs> How many Elder Dragons do you think will be taken? Okay. Start off good here. Mom called in. Jackie's getting chunked out. Hello, Ignar trying to disengage. VTO untouched off to the side. Oh, one right going in. Knocking both members back to the wall, but Vitality peeling back beautifully. Karzy's still standing for now, but he can't quite get back over the wall. VTO laying down a bit of damage, but Patrick goes stasis. golden. The stasis pays off. Buys the perfect item to save the day. Karzy flicked back and Giant X might have just done it. Photon taken down. They want to march down the mid lane and end it here. And they found the engage they needed. They found it onto Hillisang, that pick. The stasis coming out into the Syndra ultimate and managing to find the flip back onto Karzy as well. And that's it. No more Elder Dragons, just the one was all it took. Smolder, not unbeatable, not unbreakable. Clean early game from GX, a sloppier mid game. But when push came to shove, they found the angle. They found the fights, and they'll find the win. Their run continues. Three wins now, tying up SK, fighting for top eight in the LEC, taking down the five and two Vitality. And one more Hillisang death for all those keeping up with the drinking games. It's a beautiful GX win. Incredibly important. To flex top, but that seems unlikely, which is why I didn't bring it up. It's <laughs> me win, baby. Everything can be flexed everywhere when me. Level two gank from Algoya. 
He's looking for yeah, it. Looks like it. Lebov and Isa pushed up. Shea was on his way across. Lebov flashing away as Alvaro looks for the concussive blows, and Lebov wow. is just down. Ice has to flash as well, but the chase continues. Ice knocked up with a Q3. Concussive blows again. There's a cleanse away. Ice is one auto from death, and Super finds it. It's a double for MDK in the bot lane, and the Mad Lions have come for a bit of a Barney. Shea was going to get a good double in response as Elio looks to trade onto him, trying to stack up that Q. Manages to get the damage. Three for two. Oh. Elio, the minions! Oh. The minions! Ooh, he oh. just. Gave him a bit of extra sustain. That's really helping him out in these trades. Now has a nice health advantage, which he's going to use to gain control over this mid wave. And remember, both I mean, credit to BDS. They've done pretty much everything right that they can do, and now Super. they're going for the die. Yeah, Super has no cleanse. Nuke's going to just jump across here. Unbreakable comes out. Mom is called. Lebrov tanking the tower can use the bailout phase. Call first. There's the stun on Ice, though. And with Ice tanking it secondary, BDS have botched the dive. It's gone all to hell. Oh, MDK, the cover was perfect for BDS. What on earth was that? That so was... Did, oh, I, I don't it. think I can ever forgive him for that. So BDS now in a gold deficit. MDK have taken the lead with their ability to mine. Basically, a stiff breeze from falling over. They want to get it in the next 25 seconds before the plates go down. After that, the manager will kick them out of the all-you-can-eat buffet and say, you've had your fill. Mom comes down again and Bob's tanking it. He's down. He's just dead. I'll start taking over his use, but at some point, BDS, like, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It hasn't gone well for you the last few times. And Farm the, further back in the lane, you give up a lot of pressure, but MDK have read BDS like a book throughout this game. And Mirwin will be the one to take first turret. Team up very effectively if they can find that double ult combo. Dragon down to 6,000. Shale's already reset. Like, BDS, are you just going to keep this busy for the next... 40 seconds or so, because I think MDK can take it before Shea was even able to get there. But the fight continues as Alvo puts up the Unbreakable once again, and Adam just dashes into his demise. Super takes him. BDS, that just seemed like such a greedy fight to take. Your jungler had reset. There was no way you were going to win a smite fight, and Adam flashes into his death. I mean, MDK did everything correctly. Just as the top wave was hitting the tower is when they chose to force the fight. Alvaro was in a, uh, uh, initially... Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, Alvaro's going to get caught out here. Puts the Unbreakable down. Nuke dashing across the wall. Charm lands. Nuke will get one. Get the Spirit Rush reset. Crescent Guard out from Elioia. But Elioia will fall to Sheo, who rejoins the action. Super has Cleanse and Flash. So should be able to get away from the very angry bear that's beginning to chase him down. Nuke just surviving again. BDS able to get a couple of kills out of the backside. He's in range. So much utility is provided that... This composition is going to be harder and harder to fight the longer the game goes. Alvaro smartly putting four points in the E as well means that Unbreakable is up even more often in the fights. Cheo trying to get away from Mom. Super flashes for the concussive blows. And Friscawi will take the kill. Shut down over to him. Gold in his pocket. First kill in the game, as you say. It might be a Baron. It might just be a push. Be. And the risk for Adam is as well, like, he, he had to blind pick his top laner and the Nico could still flex. So yeah, there was true. always this risk of, well, maybe they just pick Nico into it and mess us up. Hostile takeover eaten by the wall. Only Alvaro goes berserk. TP in by Frisca. We count to TP by Nuke. Shale falling low and he will fall first. Elioria takes the kill. Tangle barbs into the Fates call. Will pull Lebrov to safety. Doesn't want to re-engage, unsurprisingly, as MDK once again find a pick and now can look to group up in this mid lane and push forward. Mirwin has bot gone tower. down towards the bottom lane for that bot tower. Exactly. Briscawi looking for the stun, lands it onto Adam, chunks him out a little bit. The wave is cleared in mid, but the bot tower will be Mirwin's prize for this sequence of because events. Because both teams are now looking at these outer towers as the next primary objective, right? To get them down gives you greater access into the enemy jungle. More them at all, and Adam realizes that. He's looking for the flank, he's down towards the bottom side. If you can separate Alvaro from some of the backline, then you have an access point, then you have a way in, but already Lebrov unable to see the Annie waiting in the bush, and there's two, the Dragon as well for MDK, and Vedi is three minutes later, but I think this might spell a Baron. Certainly looks like it, Ice now in danger. Has to flash away, they continue to chase Sheo. That's, that's it, it's done. MDK have scaled, welcome to the late game, 24 minutes later. BDS have been well and truly shut out. Or on Monday, they play up against Fnatic, a very difficult opponent right now. But getting this gets them to three wins, ties them up with Giant X and SK. Carmine Court and Rogue obviously play later on today. I would shout and scream about it, but it's kind of just the way things are for BDS right now as MDK find another pick on Adam, who did push up and get a tier two in the bottom lane. Nuke trying to get some gold back as well, up towards that top side. There's a tier one there for him, but MDK are looking at a much juicier prize. Inhibitor Tower, a possibility. 
as they still have a cannon minion in this wave, three casters alongside it. And the Tibbers, if you want to tank the tower with that, likely send that in first, then let the minions stay healthy enough that the backdoor bonus isn't removed. This tower's become tankier, obviously, when minions aren't around them. TP possibilities here. Any flank wards, there's one all the way in the pit. In Dragon Pit for BDS if they want it. Nuke does have a TP. Mirwin pushing in mid lane, takes those towers, melts them like a knife through butter. Mom called just to send BDS packing. They've been grounded to their fountain. Two weeks in the sin bin for them. As MDK force BDS back and will take two inhibitors off this push, most likely. They're going to keep going. Remember that Friskawi still has the flash ulti available. So does Mirwin. And there we go, Crescent Guard for the knockback, the shutdown from Super Unstoppable. Isla LeBrov and Nuke can only stand and watch as MDK raise their base to the ground. Nuke tries to dash in, hostile takeover, dodged to the side by Super, and perhaps MDK stepped a little bit too far forward as Nuke finds another bailout, brings it back. Mirwin trying to get away, does still have that Pop Blossom if he wants to go back in, but Super's low. Super's ticking down, there's the Pop Blossom, and Super! He dashed into his death, the triple! Alone. But why bother when you can create this collapse and like the kill Adam? Adam has no flash. Or slice initially. Or try and dice away, but it doesn't have it, so can't really use it. Starak seals him up a bit, though, so now they can look for a re-engage, perhaps with the Dominus coming down. MDK still very healthy. The tower's already fallen. Cher looking for perhaps a flank position. Nuke lands the charm. Only onto Alvaro, puts up the unbreakable. Minion wave cleared out, though Super's now knocking on the spring. Mirwin. Escorting that minion wave in in the top lane. Nuke down to half HP from a small combo out of Super. And with three inhibitors down, BDS are well and truly out of this game. Super minions will be doubled in all the lanes from their next spawn. TP behind here is Adam perhaps looking for the flag. Actually, I think it's Nuke who's TPing behind them. Nuke goes in, lands the charm onto Super. Super almost falls, but Super's already killed off. Ice LeBrov goes down as well as Super manages to survive. Oh no, it's not another smolder. Penta, is it? Adam retreats to the base. The Nexus towers the first target, but MDK, they see the 5k in their eyes. They want it. They pop the Dominus. Tibbers walks in first. Adam's not going to give it to him. You got to earn it. And on Smolder, you don't have to do much. Good news for G2 is for anyone that's ever looked at a post... Uncle, you're able to get all three camps. Markoon is invading here. Yike's already level three. He's Yike cleared his entire jungle, so now he's just going to cover a possible bot lane dive. We saw BDS look for these dives game one. Oh, last game. Didn't go too well. Level two just hit by Han Summer as he flap, flap, flaps his way away. Han Summer will fall for first blood, answering kill as Yike gets it. I mean, that's how it's done, for yep. the record. That's that was what you a want. nice dive from Rogue. Like, Han yeah, Summer has TP, though, ready? That true. <laughs> That's a flash in from Mickey. Yeah, Comp does have flashes. Use the heal. There's the shattering strike for the stun. Follow up continuing as Mickey falls lower. Mickey's just dying. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey? He's like a bee, man. You get one sting and then you're done. He did the sting with the shattering. Yep. So, big question marks for me. Not sure why he decided to force that. Rogue get themselves another kill. Han's a big surfer, he loves catching waves. Zoe at least looking for the hook here. And lands it onto Mickey, who can't just fairmouse he crash down away. Flash last embrace, and Mickey no flash has Mickey. no flash to get away. Mark, who's gonna flash? There's the stun. Oh, Mickey. Zero, two, one. Why is it that versus G2, Rogue looks like the most practical? And like, we don't run everywhere. We wouldn't fly everywhere, you know? That is a... Thought-provoking question, Medic. You should bring it up on a podcast sometime. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Mickey going in. Mark Kuhn looking for the flank. Dredge line away. There's the sun with the shadowing strike. Zoe Elise knocked up with the Pharamanti, but gets the shield. And Mickey's gone in once again. Zoe Elise gets one. Answered a kill from Mickey. To support support for trading. support, yeah. Yep. Obviously, both teams would love their AD carries to be picking up those kills, but still, a trade nonetheless. Caps and Larson continuing to trade in mid. Top lane, Broken Blade is winning this matchup. Honestly, so it's a tricky road. It's a tricky road. A rocky rogue so far. Uh, that was not as good. No, that was, I mean, I he's back at home, you know, returning back to those glory days. Let's see how things pan out here as a dive Mickey is ensuing. Mickey flashing, shadowing strike. Mom gets Ooh. caught as comp just falls. Tries to get the dawning shadow out, but it doesn't do much. Zoe Elise now has to flash as well, and the chase continues. Markoon and Larson coming in for a bit of a Barney. Death charge down onto Mickey. We'll get the lockup shockwave as well to follow. And Mickey once again does fall down. In the reincarnation. He keeps coming back as a beat. 
<laughs> oh, it's so another funny. dive bot lane. That it is. They're setting it up five, four man stack. Depth charge onto Mickey. TP behind as Rexlai's looking to join this fight, but already oh. Mickey oh. and Hansama are deleted. A double. Woken Blade going in with a flash knockup. Larson not tanking the tower as of yet. The charge forward by the Rexai as Broken Blade falls low. He tries to bow, gets a knock of the shield. Not enough. Trigger Seed won't save him now. And Caps can't kill off so at least, but Daisy maybe can. Daisy killed off the final breath, looking for that final order one so at least couldn't find it. On the center. Obviously, we'll scale up as he starts to go That's around to the jungle. Hunters are He's also the lowest. Yeah, neither of them are like as peak as you They're unlocking mid, they have two drakes. So for comp not to pick up the Rift <laughs> would have just been like, why? You know? Obviously, it's Rogue against oh, G2 as oh, Hansama is hooked. Oh, Hansama tried to TP away! He did! He tried to TP away! Just use your wings, man! That's what they're there for! <gasps> oh! <laughs> we need Kobe on the cast right now, because that TP for sure sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. Active HP and is trying to mitigate some of it at least. A 2,000 gold lead for Rogue. Drake up in a minute 20. They're trying to unleash, unlock this bot lane tower. Zoe and Markun stepping forward and... Caps, Mickey and Ike have to give them a time of day, have to respect it. Han Summer still only at 133 stacks, while Comp is cresting over towards that 80 mark, currently sitting at 74. Broken Blade did win out top, uh, but it doesn't really oh. matter too much as another hook connects and Caps is pulled back. The Depth Charge knocks him up and Comp and knocks him down. Like pins in front of a bowling ball. Rogue I continues mean, to find these picks. So at least he's on fire today. Been connecting some incredible. G2. Gonna look to lock in their first place. And uh, they got rogued, um, <laughs> which does seem to be a trend in the regulars. And Rogue just pushing in this top lane. Already bot lane tier one gone, already mid lane one and two have fallen. And Mickey doesn't have these flank opportunities. I mean, Rogue's right now it is Rogue still first to the yeah. objective. It's uh, Broken Blade acting as the front line, given how tanky he is. Now they're trying to gate G2 from entering into this portion of the Here river. Broken Blade down to half. So at least with Ooh. the death charge to knock up the shockwave! Perfection from Rogue, but they don't get the kill on Hans Summer. He's still Ooh. full HP, and Rogue are hurting. Finn tries to get off the backline, but Hans Summer has hit 225, and Rogue are hitting six feet under. Already Comp and Finn have died. Zoe Lee's trying to escape, but there's no tower to save him. TP away from Larson, he'll survive this fight. But will his team's chances of playoffs do the same? G2 find three for naught and they'll turn their eyes towards the dragon. So the CC bot trying to set up maybe a ball delivery system. Here we are, the fight over the mid wave, dragon spawning 30 seconds. Comp, man, you've got to use your wards. He's sitting on four right now. Rogue, they are setting up around the mid lane prior. They're going to get caught out as Zoe Elise is the first target. Death charge, shockwave once again, the dawning shadow. Mark who kills one. Hansama able to dash off to the back of the fight with another dredge on to the land on the broken blade. He's popping at the void rush, but he'll get popped afterwards. Rogue find two, the Wombo combo finds its mark. The Dragon up in seven seconds time, but Han Summer still healthy, still has the Flash 340 stacks. Will it be enough? Now that was a very nice Wombo combo from Rogue. They're looking for another play. The release goes in, very tanky execution threshold. Starts to tick down on him, Han Summer. Blast cones in, looking for Markun who has no Flash. Finish Compton, soloing Larson the Dragon. The back line. As you say, who have we got in terms of Flashes? Larson Shockwave up in about five seconds time. Comp has a flash, though, at least only with a hex, and G2 will give up the Drake, secured the soul for a level flank. Then just has to time it right. The Baron is very low. Mickey going in. There's Daisy to join the party. Broken Blade rooted up with the last embrace. Finn shows. Caps sees him. World Ender in. Markoon flashes forward. There's a shockwave as well as they kill off Yike. Caps chased off towards the top side as Mickey dives onto the back line. The Caps is down, and Rogue found it. The fight they wanted this whole split. They found it. Finally, they keep their life alive in playoffs. They shut G2 out of the fight. And they look towards the mid lane. Can they end? Another incredible team fight from Rogue. This time. Oh, Broken Blade's going to catch the he's wave. He's going to try and interrupt. He's going to delay this as much as he can. But they still have minions available to them. The TP catch from Larson. He's going to force him back. Going to have to tunnel away to safety. Rogue have the Nexus in their eyes. Another incredible fight. Rogue, it looks like they have done it. They have taken down G2 for the second time this year. And what a time to do it. Backs against the wall. The count at nine. They still have to get through G2. Broken Blade goes in with the Void Rush. Like here to help out, but the damage sources are not available for G2. Rogue will keep themselves alive in the playoff race with a decisive win versus G2.
I wouldn't say that Carmine Corp so has... Just, uh, trying to catch the minions as they crash. He's done a good job of farming yeah, so He's done far. a very good job of farming. Right? That, that's one of the, the strengths of the Zoe. It's not actually too much Bo. threat on you as Bo looks towards the top lane. Wonder jumps away. Ooh. Bo flashes, but he misses the knock-up. Bo's going to take an extra tower shot, and Cabo still gets the kill. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Yeah, the flash emo. Bo can EQ across this wall, dodge the vision. This way Wonder has no wards. flash. They have information on where Yankos is. He's going to get here too late, though. I mean, Wonder is starting to get away from this. Kabashad's still on the chase. Yankos going to join the fray. Double bounce from Wonder, but he's killed by the Dragon's Rage there. Good kill from Bo as the chase continues. Yankos has no flash, and the collapse from Carmine Core is enough. Trimby tries to help out his jungler, but even with the heal. The boar is skewered by Carmine Core. Really nice pathing there from Bo. He's able to navigate through the vision. Eventually, between the two teams. Kind of what we often see in terms of neutral objectives. Overall, off down. He has the TP. You can see him sitting in base right now, waiting for the signal. Wonders build up Meganar. He has the TP as well. Only has that control ward down towards the bottom side. Two TP, two though. So I was going to join in. There's the charm. Quickness on the back line. Root though onto Rakan. As Targumus has to get away. Flacket locked up in the cataclysm, but he finds the last breath. Wonder gets a stun onto the wall. As upstairs locked up, but already two kills. Over to Carmine Core. Wonder has to flash. The grand entrance, last embrace with the root, Trimby, Flacken, and Zaiwu. It's actually only one kill so far for KC as they've only taken out Yankos, but that means the jungler is dead. Zaiwu flashes to the help of his team. Targumus and upset force down towards the bottom side of the fight. Trimby chasing onto Saken. Kabashar misses the undertow and gets knocked up, locked up, and the piercing dark will find its mark. Heretics take the Drake after Carmine Core killed the enemy jungle. Crazy back and forth. But they don't have those anymore means that it's going to be a much harder fight for Heretics to take. And I wonder if they'll actually just try to avoid fighting entirely, yeah. because I think... Trickle lanes with mid laner oh. v mid laner, but Zrivo, he spots Bo, still gets knocked up. There's the quickness as well. Targumus looking for the knock-up afterwards. Shockwave comes out. Targumus still chasing forward. Yankos, Glacial Prison, but Targumus unable to tank it in time. The Cataclysm back onto the back line from Bo, but he's left for dead. Targumus couldn't eat the Glacial Prison. And because of that, Bo pays with his life. Bo just... Be back up towards the top side, Wonder. Ooh, look at that damage on the target already, yeah, as you say. Good damage onto Targumus. There's the TP in. Counter TP invested by Wonder. Trying to build up that Mega Narbar. About a third right now. Looking to go in. The quickness goes, but Flacker, the only one caught by it. Flashed away by Trimby. 3000 HP on the Drake. Bo goes in with a Cataclysm to re engage, but Trimby still alive on the Drake. Who's going to take it? It's secured by Cabochard. Flacker trying to dive in. Cabochard doing everything he can, but he'll fall as well. A decisive victory in the fight for Heretics. They find four. Only Bo survives the Drake, though to Carmine Core. KC get completely wiped. I didn't quite catch how Zero, that... 0-1-7. Uh, Zero, Hasn't really been picking up the kills, but still a lot of damage to his name. Quickness in once again. There's the knockup with the Cataclysm going forward. Targum is doing everything he can to get Carmine Core back in the game. TP to the standard. Blackhead gets the knockup with the last breath, but I don't think it's going to be enough as Blackhead dives forward. The Shockwave, the, the ultimate... Oh! It's two! It's beautiful, and now Upset has to do everything in this fight. The lightning crash, trying to build up the stacks. Bo still gets the damage onto Zvira, who is able just to escape for the moment, but Upset will find him. The shutdown down, the grand entrance of Upset in the fight, a triple for him. Now Wonder joining the Barney, a little bit delayed. His invitation lost in the post, it seems. It's now forced down towards the bottom side of the fight. Heretics can just look for Targumus here. Isolate the engage. Who cares if you give up the dragon? You force the quickness out of him. Now you come back into the fight. Really good due diligence from Heretics. Cabochard also is catching bot wave. Carmine Core wisely give this up. Very. You think in a war of attrition, they should have an advantage just because of their range. Actually, the plot of the Matrix as well. Initially, he dodged the bullets and then he just survived. Them. True. So. Bo, though, caught out, didn't dude, Wait, use the device, he's trying to get away. Completely I was so that. sure he would just EQ out of it. Still had the flash as well, so Bo's no dead. No chance to move, that's a Baron unlock for sure for Heretics. Cabochard coming in from the side as well. They do still have the engage of Targamus and Cabochard running onto that I think with the Yasuo, they just melt this, no? Oh, Ariana, Yasuo? They Yasuo? haven't spotted Target yet. They do melt it, Betty. You're entirely correct on that, but Target now spotted on a ward. Trimby forced off towards the top side. There's the TP in by Wonder. He's built up that Meganar bar. Targum is still just suspicious as he goes in. There's the charm and there's a chase in from Cabochard. Stop watch from Zyru. Dawning shadow from Trimby for a bit of extra shield and Cabochard's already down. The flash away from Zyro as well will keep him alive and this is routing. Carmine Core left for dead. Heretics and get three kills after killing Bo off earlier. Zyru is going to survive as well. They will get the Baron.
And everything swings in the favor of Heretic. Give up the tier two mid, which is what Carmine Core are deciding to do right now. Upset will catch the wave as it crashes towards the inhibitor tower, but then Wonder can go down towards bot lane if he wants, doesn't have the TP, more likely to go towards top to bolster his team's offensive on this second tier two. Oh, nice shockwave on the oh, Seiken. Seiken might just be dead. Dawning Shadow is available for Trimby, but they don't quite use it. Yankos diving in as well, and as is Flacken onto that back line. Immortal Shubo healing him up as well. Yankos is down, oh. but it's Carmine Court have just been left for the Wolves. Upset getting chased out by Wonder. Targamus can dash away, can dance away, but for how much longer will Carmine Core be dancing? The battle dance out to Upset gets him to safety. Double cannon minions will chip away at this tower. Trimby will do the same. They'll wait for the next wave to come in, and this will be an inhibitor tower broken by Heretics. Slackhead is a good Yasuo player. Yeah, he I is. mean, <laughs> he has only won two of his five games on the stage with it, but. Now sorry, Soul Betty. Point. Did they get an inhibitor tower? <laughs> okay, it seemed to work. Now on Soul Point, as you say, this would be Soul for the Mountain, us for them. Bo goes in, but Yankos doesn't miss those. Smite secure for Heretics. Bo pays for. The attempt with his life, and now bot lane the target for Heretics as they can push this in. No Baron on them, but two and a half minutes before that does come up. It looks like Carmine Court are just going to try and push out their waves in the other lanes. Mid their first prior, can't get up towards top in time. Cabochard will go and answer that himself. Heretics with this cannon minion wave should be getting their third tier two of the game. Now, they may just choose to dive again. I think that from this position, it's a lot better. Um, especially now that they have the Mountain Soul yeah, at their Trimby disposal. Just walks them. Like, Trimby does so much damage. He's got opportunity humors. Look at this. Trimby just killed him. That was all Trimby. <laughs> Yankos, get, get the hell out of my kill feed. You didn't assist on that. That was all Trimby Even all through the, the ultimate, time. just to secure it as well. 150 stacks on the center at 30 minutes. And now the Nexus towers the target. The flash away oh. by Trimby as Targamus looks for the engage. Trimby is having an absolute purple patch as Heretics are looking to beat Carmine Core, Purple and Bruce. This will be the Nexus. Heretics will take it. And Carmine Core do still have a chance, but it is looking mighty slim that they make it into playoffs. Heretics, what an upswing.